The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23. Thank you guys. I hope you guys are well. It's Tom with Watchman River. Thanks for joining me today. I've got, you know, normally I'm very organized. I think you guys know this, but today I'm all over the place. I don't have anything organized, and but I have so much to cover and I know that I don't have enough time to cover it. But I am going to do my best and try to figure this all out. So, Saturday, before I get to news, because, man, an explosion is coming. Things are coming to this world in the next month or two, month or three, somewhere in this time period. We are living in the very last days. And I feel like we are marching rapidly towards the rapture. It's getting really really close and there is explosive times coming i believe ramadan it's going to be crazy but i will i will get to that but first i just want to talk about um i shared my testimony on saturday many of you know and the support i got in the comments was incredible and i, th I think i want to start off by telling you that i hadn't planned on recording it on saturday until the last minute and I came down to the river and the Lord's had it on my heart to share my testimony for quite some time. But I realized right as I headed down here, today's a day. And I kind of pushed aside the other stuff I was going to talk about and, and did my testimony. And right after I recorded it, I texted my good friend Tyler from generation 2434. And I don't think he'll mind me sharing just a few things he said. Um, I told him, you know, I just did the hardest video of my life. You know, I had a, I was so tired the rest of the day. It just drained me emotionally. Um, but I told him, I, I just recorded the the hardest video of my life. And he, he, he immediately replied, your testimony? And I said, yes. And he said, awesome, Tom, the Lord will use it. In our weakness, he is made strong. And I said, that's the only reason I did it. And that's what I think he was saying to me in almost the exact words. And Tyler said, it only serves to show what a great and redeeming Savior we have. Way to go, brother. Which encouraged me right before it was even uploaded. I hadn't, I hadn't even uploaded the video at that time. And I was getting encouragement from him and also from Brother Chooch. And... Uh, and you guys, oh my goodness, I, I'm going to spend quite a bit of this video. I mean, I'm going to go through the news and tell you what's going on, but I'm going to spend a lot of time in this video reading comments that were left on Saturday because I think they're very important. I think as important as it was for me to share my testimony, I think it's very important that I share some of these comments because I think the Lord is using that video. I really believe it. It was hard, man. You know, it was hard, like. I cried and, uh, you know, but it was important. It was important. We're in the last days and the Lord doesn't want anyone to perish. And even if we have to show people where we've been, and sometimes it's hard to say where we've been and what we've done in our lives, but I think it draws people to realize, wow, Christians really aren't perfect. They're just forgiven, right? Right. All right, first, let me just tell you, I'm just going to do one headline. And then I'm going to go into some of those comments. And then I'm going to go back to some more news. And like I said, nothing's organized. So just forget, I'm going to be hopping all over the place. But from the Jerusalem Post, they said an explosion is coming. Hamas warns against Ramadan restrictions on the Temple Mount. This has got them so fired up. This has got so many people fired up about what's going to happen during Ramadan with Israel limiting 
the amount of people that can go up there. Uh, this says Hamas issued a strong warning to Israel on the terror organization's Telegram channel on Saturday, threatening an explosion of rage should Muslim access to the Al-Aqsa Mosque on Jerusalem's Temple Mount be restricted during Ramadan. Let our enemy know that souls are boiling and our anger is imminent and an explosion is coming in response to any restrictions to the entry of Muslims to the Al-Aqsa Mosque during the month of Ramadan. Um, another one was Ramadan explosion. This is from a different, this is from the JewishPress.com. Ramadan explosion looms for Israel and Hamas. The statistics speak volumes over the years. The Muslim holy month of Ramadan in Judea, Samaria, and Eastern Jerusalem has morphed into a breeding ground for Muslim violence and terror attacks. It's always been, yeah. This year, Ramadan is expected to begin at sundown on March 10th, and Israel is already at war with Hamas. Israeli leaders have hinted that they will send ground forces into Rafah, Hamas's last stronghold, if no agreement on a hostage release is made by then. So they're literally saying, like Israel's talking about March 10th, which opens Ramadan and saying, we're going to go into Rafah then and start blasting it. Meanwhile, restricting the Muslims' access to the Temple Mount and to the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And, it's, you know, something's going... Between this and the uh, the great American eclipse, and I, I base my Bible prophecy more on Israel than America, but I just... There's so many things going on right now. And the rumors of wars in this world, we are not long for this world. I really, really want you to understand that. That should be the biggest takeaway from this video is we're, we're not long for this world. We're in the season of the rapture. We're in those final days. We're in those final days. Okay, so now I'm going to hop over and I'm going to go to some of these comments that I got from Saturday because they're so powerful. And like I said, you know, and it's, and it's so hard picking some to read. I did. I didn't, I, I saw a, many, many of the comments. I think there were 1600, 1700 comments left, something like that. So I didn't go through all of them. And, uh, it doesn't, you know, the ones I pick, it doesn't mean they're better than the other ones because I was just scrolling and just gathering them and I didn't even get a quarter of the way down the list, I don't think. But here we go. Fia. Jesus took me out of the pit of alcohol abuse, always in tears in the morning telling God, I don't want, I don't want to drink, and then drinking again that evening. Fear-filled, unstable, going through a divorce without friends. Then I gave the ropes of my life over to God, and he changed me inside and out. Fear left. I am sober now for 17 years, living only for Jesus. Praise God. There's so many comments like this. And I'm just sitting there reading these comments saying, like, I shared my thing. And I always tell you, I'm just the face of this community. Because this is becoming a ginormous family, the Watchman River family. I'm just the face of it. But all of a sudden, once again, like you guys rise up and I read all these things that encourage me. And I'm just like, I, I have to share some of these comments with the family. This is Lynette. Oh my, I cried. I'm 70 years old and in my 30s, I had an affair with my now husband. Many got hurt, including my first husband. He's passed away now. But last night I cried and I begged God to forgive me. I do every time I pray. Then your testimony came up and it's almost like God said, through you, Tom, I, uh, through you, Tom, I forgive you, Lynn. I think I get what she's saying there. Thank you, Jesus, my hero, my savior, my Lord. Thank you, Tom. Lynn from New Zealand. Yeah. These are hard to read too, man. All right, Bailey. Precious friend and brother in Christ Jesus, one thing I have learned in my life is that if he could forgive me for the wretched life I was living, sexual abuse, rape, sexual promiscuity, prostitution so I could feed my children, abortion, drugs and alcohol, the list goes on. Then brokenness and a serious broken vessel is what he desired of me and he graciously saved me. 
We serve a mighty God and a forgiving Father, a compassionate Lord. Today, my heart's desire is to continue to allow him to be the change in me. I thank God that you shared and know it's never too late. Come, Lord Jesus, come. That was, I think that's what I called the video, or maybe it said it on the thumbnail. I'm not sure, but it's it's never too late. It's never too late. Jen, I was one of them, adulterers, and it was horrible. I always lied and tried to justify my actions. I was so far from God. Then one day I realized I needed God. So many bad things were happening to me. I am so close to God now, and I will never go through life without him. I also had a stranger walk up to me in a grocery store and tell me to read Psalm 91. I never saw her again, and after I read that, I made a change that day to make God my everything. I can relate, Tom. Thank you so much for sharing your testimony. Thank you for sharing that, Jen. Lori, Tom, thank you for sharing your testimony. It takes humility and courage, but it is a powerful example of how Jesus transforms us. The Lord has helped me overcome childhood neglect and poverty in a family torn apart by mental illness. I felt invisible growing up and unloved. When I met Christ, I knew he saw me and loved me. It changed my life. Healing and restoration is what Jesus does best. God bless you. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Jason, listen and listen closely, my dear brother Tom. Never apologize for feeding your family through the work of the Lord. It breaks my heart to hear Christians attack those who do full-time ministry and earn some money to sustain their families. Not only to sustain your family, but to contribute to a good standard of living. How dare someone scoff at the blessings the Lord bestows on those who work for the gospel? There is a big difference between buying private jets and putting food and a roof over your family. Bless you, Tom. Uh, love you, my brother in Christ. Thank you, Jason. That really did bless me. Um, you know, I talked about that aspect of it, and there were a lot of comments about it, but I think that's the only one I'm going to I'm gonna read. But, yeah, it's just the way it is today. It is. Gloria, dear Tom, I have been listening to you every day. It has been a blessing. Today, you brought to my memory a sad and shameful time in my life just to remind me that the Lord has forgiven me and has made all things new. Some 20 years ago, I was an adulterer too. And even if I was having affairs, only in my thoughts, it took me down a spiral that ended up ruining my life. I lost my husband, lost my house, my job, my friends, my money. My son had to grow up living in two homes. In the middle of that chaos, I decided to do what every prodigal child should do. Go back to the father. He was waiting for me with open arms. I thank the Lord for every blessing, and I thank you for your obedience and faithfulness. May the Lord bless you and your family daily with the riches of his glory. Amen. Thank you for sharing that, Gloria. Steve, thank you for this video today. God spoke to me through this message. I cried with you watching because I went through the same struggles of feeling like a failure and worthless. I walked away so many times and sinned for so long that I couldn't even talk to God out of shame. A year ago, God called me out of darkness and I knew it was time to repent and come back. I found your channel last summer and it has been such a blessing to me. I've learned so much and still seeking the Lord by faith and by his grace, I am forgiven. I never, I, I have had a few hiccups along the way, but I won't give up. I will get back up and keep seeking his face until he returns for us. Praise God, Steve. I'm so glad you came back. So glad you came back. Let's do one more and then I'll maybe get to some news. Deanna, Tom, I'm so glad you told your testimony. But Tom, you are God's son, not garbage. He loves you no matter what. But I want to say thank you for putting up these videos. You don't know how much God is using you for me. I have had it hard physically and mentally. 
I get something every day from you. God has blessed me. I also had Lyme disease. My husband and I love you, brother. The good, the bad, and the ugly. You keep going until we go home, and God says to you, well done, my good and faithful servant. We are so glad that God brought you to us. Thank you. Thank you, guys. That encourages me. I don't feel like I deserve it. All right, where is this one? Let me do, I'm going to do two more, then I'll get to news. And then I'll do some more maybe later if we have time. Ruthie, Tom, this is a beautiful testament of your faith in Jesus to keep coming back until you realize he is the one to be faithful to. Amen. I truly understand your story 100%. It was my dad's story as well that led me, that led to my story. I used my body to feel the love of someone instead of letting God work in me. I'm 61 now, and now I truly feel him after the world shifted several years ago and woke me up. It woke a lot of people up. God is so good. I was a prodigal daughter for most of my 61 years. Now I can't stop thinking about Jesus and what he did for me. Thank you for telling us your testimony. It has allowed us to know we are not perfect, and through Jesus, all things can be made new. Thank you, Ruthie. Thank you. All right, I think I'm gonna stop there and, and look at some stories here, okay? So here's what's going on. This is from Israel Today. The Americans say that they, together with Qatar and Egypt, have reached a ceasefire agreement between Israel and Hamas that also includes a hudna in Gaza. Just yesterday, Israeli officials said a deal was still far off. Use of the word hudna is also troubling. This is an Islamic concept by which a weaker Muslim force sues for temporary peace so it can regroup and fight again. You know, I just don't, I just don't see a, a peace deal happening. I don't know, maybe, maybe some ceasefire will happen and, you know, I'm, I just can't imagine. We'll see. We'll see. We're, we are in the last days, guys. This is from Israel Today. Israel's war cabinet last night approved a plan of attack for Rafah, the last remaining Hamas stronghold in Gaza. The plan includes evacuation of large parts of the civilian population, including those from northern Gaza who are now sheltering in Rafah. Rafah, Rafah. It also includes mechanisms to deliver humanitarian aid in a way that prevents Hamas from confiscating the good, either for its own use or to sell at exorbitant prices. So yeah, the war cabinet met and they're talking about a, a plan of attack for Rafa and they're talking about it. They've already said March 10th, they may start it the first day of Ramadan. Just imagine that is an explosion in the Middle East. It's We're in very interesting times. This is insider paper. This was this morning, early, early. Israel strikes East Lebanon for the first time since the Gaza war. Israel struck Hezbollah targets near the Lebanese city of Baalbek on Monday. A security source told the AFP in the first strike on Lebanon's east in almost five months of cross-border clashes. An Israeli strike hit a building housing a Hezbollah civilian institution in a Baalbek um, suburb. And a second Israeli strike hit a warehouse near Baalbek according to or belonging to the Iran-backed group, the source said. The Israeli army said it is currently striking Hezbollah terror targets deep inside Lebanon. I saw some video of that, and yeah, there they are. It's pretty wild. Also, this was, when was this from? I think it was yesterday, maybe Saturday. The United States and Britain launched dozens of strikes against Houthi militants. Uh, oh, on Saturday evening. The strikes are the largest military operation against the Houthis in two weeks. The attacks targeted the infrastructure and weapons used by the Houthis to carry out their attacks. So there you go. American officials say the United States and Britain have bombed 18 sites of Yemen's army. So there you go. That's the Houthi bar news. Um, Times of Israel. Two Hezbollah members killed as Israel allegedly strikes Syria-Lebanon border. And uh, this was Sunday morning, yesterday morning. Footage showed a truck engulfed in flames on a road near the border with northern Lebanon. 
Shortly after the strike, Iran-backed Lebanese terror group Hezbollah announced that two of its operatives were killed on the road to Jerusalem, its term for operatives slain in Israeli strikes. It did not say where the two were killed. So this just keeps going on and on and on in Israel. All right, let me see if there's any other Israeli news I have here. I'm kind of thumbing through. What I got? Man, there's just a lot of stuff. Amir Sarfati said yesterday that the Prime Minister Netanyahu said, we are on our way to Rafah. Today, we will approve the plans, including the evacuation of the civilian population from there in order to achieve a complete victory over Hamas. Uh, also, Gallant said over the weekend that Israel will increase strikes on Hezbollah, even if there is a temporary ceasefire in Gaza. So they've been saying that all along. Like, don't think Hezbollah, like, we're going to do a ceasefire there if we get a ceasefire with Hamas in Gaza. So that's going on. Um, that's weather kind of stuff. That's Clown World. Well, maybe we'll do a Clown World story in a minute. Ooh, that's another Clown World one. Man, I got so much. Chinese President Xi, he has called for the mass production of humanoid robots by 2025. That's what he wants. He wants a humanoid robots, mass production. There they are. They're all getting ready for the seven-year tribulation. They don't even know it. They don't even know it. Also, there's a there's a new weather balloon. I'm going to call it a weather balloon, but <laughs> there's a new balloon flying over the United States. And, you know, they're not talking about blowing it out of the sky like I would. There's a little fly in here. They're not <laughs> wetting my nose. They're not talking, they're not talking about blowing it out of the sky like I would. You know, ever fly across the United States on a plane? It's mostly open space. Mostly open space. But military tracking high altitude balloon of own unknown origin over Southeast Colorado. Wild. The unidentified high altitude balloon is drifting eastward in the jet stream. A military aircraft spotted the balloon and determined that it is not a threat. It's just incredible. But its origin and purpose remains unknown at this time. This is the same thing they said the last time. And then two months later, they came out and said, oh, it got some pretty incredible data over our nuclear power plants. But we let it drift away, you know. Sailing takes me away. <laughs> That's all I'm thinking of with these weather balloons. Incredible. I'd blow that thing out of the sky so quick, but it's just a balloon, they say. All right, what else? Uh, I'm just digging through stuff here. We got that. This was, this was an interesting story that happened the day before yesterday from the Washington Post. The White House reserves, I'm sorry, the White House reverses the West Bank policy calling Israeli settlements illegal. Man, are we turning our backs on Israel lately? Credible. The decision was in response to reports that the far-right government of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was planning further settlement expansion. Secretary of State Blinken announced the reversal of the previous administration's position on Israeli settlements in the West Bank on Friday, saying they are inconsistent with international law. Watch the weather. I always say that whenever the United States turns its back on Israel. This was last night. Sirens now reported in the Gaza periphery. It seems Hamas is still able to threaten southern Israel. This is why Israelis oppose a ceasefire, let alone an end to the war. That was from Israel today. Oh, man, this was tragic. A U.S. airman sets himself on fire outside the Israeli embassy in Washington I believe it was on Saturday and he, uh, or maybe yesterday. Let's see. Yesterday. Yeah, he walked up, poured fuel over himself and lit himself on fire. And he was screaming free Palestine as he was dying. And he ended up dying this morning. Yeah. Oh. What else? Let's see. Maybe we should go to Clown World. This, before we go to Clown Wars, this is just sad. New report details atrocities of persecution in Nigeria with 8,000 Christians killed last year alone. In 2023, there were 8, 
thousand Christians killed in Nigeria. Can you imagine? That is a lot of people. It's a lot of brothers and sisters. They're safe with Jesus now. They're safe with Jesus now. But pray for the ones that are still being killed over there. We're living in the last days. They're saying the soaring temperatures this week could shatter hundreds of records around the United States. And uh, they're saying hundreds of temperature records, record highs and record warm lows are expected to fall throughout midweek with Monday and Tuesday forecast to be some of the warmest days across the plains and Midwest. On Monday, more than 250 million Americans will experience above average temperatures. I saw a map. It's like some of the place getting 70s, 90s. It's like it's February, you know, just crazy. An unseasonable warm-up will continue to spread throughout most of the U.S. this week with high temperatures from Texas to the Midwest feeling more like May than the end of winter. Pretty wild, huh? Hey, check this out. Look at that thing. <laughs> this is part of clown. Where's my clown world sound effect? Listen to this. This AI-powered robot dog looks something like from the Terminator. <laughs> just, I just can't believe people want this stuff. But Techno Mobile has taken to Mobile World Congress 2024 to announce the Techno Dynamic One, a robotic, a robotic and AI-enhanced dog. Like, there's not enough real dogs we can rescue. You know, we need a robot dog. Reigniting the futuristic sci-fi dream for millions of nerds, the Dynamic One has been painstakingly created to emulate a real dog as closely as possible with its design based on the German Shepherd breed. A cooling system within the Dynamic One's knees allow the robot to copy dog movements, letting it climb stairs, offer its paw for handshakes. I don't, no thanks, I'll just have water. Four microphones work with the AI algorithm within the dog's head to recognize audio prompts, so you can treat it just like a normal dog without any poop to pick up. That's a dog that roams around Clown World. I'll take a real dog if I want a dog. Thank you. Thank you. Can you imagine? I just, this world's crazy. But somebody's going to line up to buy a fake dog, and they'll actually fall in love with it. You know? And they said, I think they said the batteries last about... 90 minutes, you know. People are weird. People are weird. In the in the uh, United Kingdom, AI tech is trialed to spot drivers on the phone. They're saying they have these new safety cameras. They're being installed in Sussex. And they're, they're going to detect if you have your seatbelt on or if you're on your phone. And I'm sure it'll write you a ticket accordingly. But it's uh, it's using AI you know, to do that. Now, listen to this. They're saying ditching meat. This is from uh, the conversation. Ditching meat could release vital land to produce energy and remove carbon from the atmosphere. So they're saying cows take up too much land and chickens. And if we all ditch meat and dairy and stuff, there'll be so much more land so they can reduce carbon. These are the same people who are also talking nuclear war all over the world, you know. You never hear about climate change as they're threatening nukes. <laughs> they live in two different worlds, right? You know, everybody's like, oh, we're not going to let them do that. Oh, we'll blow up a gas pipeline. Oh, that ruined the environment. They don't talk about the environment when they blow up Nord Stream's pipelines. Never hear about the environment then. When they're threatening nuclear war, you never hear about the environment. When it's about our food, oh, we got to save the planet. Stop breathing and eating. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so clowny. It's so clowny. Anyway, how about we... Let's go back to some comments. Is that okay? Are you guys okay with this? I know we're at like the almost the 30-minute mark. And I have to share the gospel too. But let's see. Beyond Hope, your testimony was a blessing to me. I cried when you shared your story. Our daughter was blessed with an amazing singing voice. She then got very sick from a severe asthma attack and had to be put on a ventilator for 10 days. We almost lost her. Since then, she hasn't been able to sing. And many times through the last few years, she has said she would rather the Lord allow her to die than for her to lose her ability to sing. But God. 
Through so many prayers, our daughter has drawn close to the Lord. and She is now studying to become a Christian psychologist so she can help others who go through difficult times. I do believe that dream may never re be realized as I am thinking the rapture will happen soon. But just in case he tarries just a bit, Maranatha. I'm glad she's doing that. You know, I believe, you guys know, I, I'm looking up every day. I believe the rapture is so soon, but you don't push pause on your life. We don't, you know, we don't wait out in a cornfield for the rapture. You, we have to occupy. Because you know what? This sweet daughter of theirs that is going to school for this to become a, a Christian psychologist if, if she just said, well, the rapture's soon, so I'm not going to go to school for this because I'll never be able to finish. Do you realize like the opportunity she has within this school to reach people for Jesus? That's how we reach people. You know, we're not of the world, but we're in the world. So while we're in the world, we're occupying until Jesus comes back. You know, we don't just pause and wait and just do nothing. You know, conservative weirdo. Tom, your testimony is amazing. And it's so much like mine, a rough childhood, adultery, OCD, and illness, all while coming in and out of God's presence and will. God is the only way to go. I ran back to him in October of 2022, and I can't leave him again. I won't. God means too much to me, and I need him all the time. God always makes sure I have what I need, just what I need for the day. I love the Lord so much. Oh, thank you for sharing that. It's awesome. Mary. You just described my spiritual walk, decline, walk again, decline again, that I had my whole life too. Yet he patiently waited for me to be ready and accepting of him as the center of my life. I still struggle not to be distracted by the things of this world, but he is always right there, ready to receive me with open arms. I love you, brother Tom. Looking forward to the day we are all in unison this flop, there's a one little gnat in this car and he is driving me nuts. And he's going in my nose again. Oh. Tom, looking forward to the day we are all in unison in full worship of our king. Thank you. I don't think Satan wants me to read these, so I'm going to keep reading them because there's one tiny little gnat in this car who will not leave me alone. I heard, so this is Teddy. I heard someone say once that Christians living in sin are the most tormented people. I love that. Because we have the constant conviction of the Holy Spirit. I have been there and it is miserable. We need to become that new creation so we can have an abundant life. Amen. I know I was tormented. I was a tormented Christian. I understand that. Joy, thank you for your testimony. I was literally the woman at the well. I am an adulterer, but the grace of God delivered me from me and my life of sin. I am so grateful and thankful that he never gave up on me. Love and appreciate you, Brother Tom, and your faithfulness on this channel. Praise God. Thank you, Joy. Salt Shaker. I can't thank you enough for this testimony. I am listening to it a second time, and I'm the kind of person who never watches anything twice. I am on the other side of what you talked about. My unbelieving husband was in an adulterous relationship for six years. I just found out about it last September. You are right about adultery when you called it poison. The fallout from this has almost destroyed my life. If it weren't for Jesus, I wouldn't be here anymore. I don't know what the Lord wants me to do about our relationship or anything else in my future, but I pray for all the people who are doing this sin and those affected by it. I love how the Lord told you, behold, I make all things new. That gives me hope, and I am so thankful that no matter what, I have a man who truly loves me and will never forsake me, which is Jesus, of course. Thank you, Tom, for your testimony. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. Red Rose. Beautiful, beautiful testimony, Tom. Absolutely true that it is never too late to turn to Jesus because he does make all things new, even the darkest heart. Amen. Thank you. Stacy, thank you, Tom, for being so honest. I'm sharing this with my 36-year-old son. He had a coming back to Jesus moment five months ago. He is now on fire for God, so much so that I constantly cry out to God, thank you, 
We are all unworthy of his grace, mercy, forgiveness, and love. But I am so very thankful that he doesn't think so. God bless you. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you. Want to do some more? Let's do a couple more. Ben, I was a selfish, hateful, addicted womanizer. I didn't care about hurting people in any way. I didn't care if you were married or in a relationship. I would still approach. I was a thief. I stole from my mom, my dad, my grandmother, and nobody wanted me around. I can't blame them. I burnt those bridges. I grew up decent. We weren't poor. Good parents, but I thought I knew everything. Long story short, I ended up in jail. I got on my knees in my jail cell, and I begged God to give me one last chance. A few months later, I got out, and since then, I've never looked back. That was 2017. Fast forward to today. My home is paid off. I've got a career. My life is put together. I'm, a, I'm single now, and that's what, what I deserve. Anyway, rest in peace, 1989 to, to 2017. Those days are long gone. I owe it to my to I owe it all to the Lord and to my mom. Mom was the only person that was there during all of that. God did give me my last chance and I thrived. Praise God, Ben. That's beautiful. He makes all things new. If you will allow him to. Tracy. Thank you, Tom, for being honest with us. My husband had affairs on me, and it was so devastating. I realized then that the only person who I could rely on and trust was Jesus, my God. I was a diff it was a difficult season, and it's still hard to think about. I decided to forgive my husband and let God have his way in our marriage. And after lots of counseling and prayer, I'm happy to say we're still married. God bless you and your family. I'm glad you're still married, Tracy. I'm glad. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, Jesus died for our sins and he shed that blood that washes us white as snow, but that doesn't stop our sins that we chose to do before then from having consequences. There are consequences to my sin that will be with me until the day I'm raptured. You know, just you look at the story of David and Bathsheba. You know, once David, that was a ginormous turning point in his life. He was never the same. He was still the apple of God's eye. But he had consequences till the day he died, right? He had consequences till the day he went to be with the Lord. Let's do one more. Linda, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Thank you, Tom, for sharing with us your testimony today. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. God's gift is unspeakable. Jesus came here. And he put on human flesh. He was perfect. And he came here knowing he was going to shed blood that would take care of the sin problem for anyone who would put their faith in the blood and the power of the blood to wash you white as snow and believe in Jesus' finished work on the cross, that he died, he was buried, and he rose again the third day. That's the gospel. That's the good news. We're saved by grace, an unearned gift through faith in Christ Jesus. Jesus paid for our sins, our short fallenness with his blood. He knew he was coming here to do it. And he knew when he was on the cross, all of our sins were placed on him. Every one of our sins. Every one of our sins. And he said, it is finished, his last words. Because... The sin debt had been paid in full. He paid it with his blood. And then he died and was buried and rose again. But when you realize that you're a sinner, when you because we're all sinners, when you realize, like, I'm a sinner, I need a Savior, you look to Jesus. That's the only Savior. That's the only thing you got. You look to Jesus' finished work and his blood. And you say to Jesus, I'm a sinner. 
and I believe now, no matter, you have to get to that, you have to, I don't care what research you have to do, your time is short. We are very close to the rapture. And if you are on the fence about this, you better choose a side real quick. I highly recommend choosing the side of admitting you're a sinner to Jesus and realizing that his blood will wash you white as snow, that that blood paid for every sin. And then you believe in his finished work on the cross. And you say, Jesus, I need a savior. I believe this. You're my savior. And you know what? God will put his Holy Spirit in you at that time. You will be born again. I highly recommend you do it now. Because guys, time is short. We're seeing everything in the world line up the exact way we were told it would. And we're waiting for the rapture because right after that's a seven year tribulation. And I honestly, honestly think the seven year tribulation could happen tomorrow. So I'm basically saying, look up every day because we're there. We're waiting for the rapture. We're there. Okay. Don't put it off. I love you guys. I'm going to shut the camera off and I'm going to say a prayer for everyone who watched this video. Sorry. It was a little, uh, you know, here and there all over the place, but I don't know, I just, that's the way I was led to make the video today. Um, and sorry for the nap that kept flying around my face and going in my nose. <laughs> but I'm going to shut the camera off and I'm going to say a prayer for every person who watched this video. And if we're not raptured today, and today is a perfectly good day for the rapture. But if we're not, God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you guys.